This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we have severe problems at the Monticello repeater site, once known as the abandoned repeater site. Our guy lines are loose, and it is unsafe to climb the tower without replacing these anchors and redoing the guy lines. And we still have too many trees around this particular set of wires. So we had some new posts created, and we're going to get them into the ground. This week on El Cara Ham Radio. Well, folks, I'd love to tell you that everything is hunky-dory at what we used to call the abandoned repeater site, but it was anything but nice. We were going to climb that tower, start taking down some more cables, installing new antennas, but our professional tower climber slash installer slash maintainer said it was unsafe. And when he started showing us these I-beams and the guy lines and how loose they were, we all could see that we have some major problems and these need to be taken care of as quickly as possible. We'd had some high winds in the area not long before. The guy lines appear to be getting even loose, uh, more loose and we're at risks that uh, no club wants to have where a tower might actually go down. So uh, we needed to replace these anchor posts in the ground and it was embarrassing when we started digging, we'll show you this in a few minutes, that uh, the original anchor posts I don't know who put them in the ground or how it was engineered, but it didn't look terribly professional. And sometimes when you inherit uh, an old repeater site, it's one of the things that you need to take a look at. So here on the east side of the tower, we still have way too many trees. These are gonna have to go, but we already had one tree, a dead tree that was uh, hung up in the guy lines. You can see how loose these guy lines are. And so we were just starting to remove some of this brush. We still have a lot of work to do at our next work day here at the repeater site. So we're just moving a few things out of the way to get it in, uh, in preparation for uh, installing the new anchor post. So we went to our favorite box store and we had pallets of cement bags, Quickcrete 80 pound bags delivered to the site the day prior to our work day. Now this was an emergency work day. We actually have scheduled on the calendar every month work days for each of our repeater sites, but this was such an emergency, we said we've got to take care of this immediately. So again, we had these two pallets delivered, total of 81 bags uh, is what we ended up purchasing. 27 bags will go in each hole where we have anchor posts. I even put a camouflage top tarp over it. Uh, we thought there might be a little bit of rain, and uh, of course we didn't want uh, anybody looking from a satellite above to be able to see our, our concrete. Just just kind of a joke there. But in any event, um, overnight, and uh, just wanted to make sure it didn't blow away. And then the next day, we got started digging. Now, by the time I showed up, a couple of the guys had already gotten this hole about three feet deep, so we just had to finish it out. Again, looking at the original anchor post, we didn't hit any concrete from the old posts at all. Um, and what concrete we did see was just around the post itself. We figure it's probably three to four feet, five feet deep at the old post, but it's only about a foot around. We went about a yard square around the new posts. We had uh, another gentleman bring his cement mixer and uh, it made the job of mixing all of this concrete uh, a real treat uh, for the project because it didn't take us nearly as long. Of course, you got to bring water and he had a tote as well on his trailer. And then we had another member bring his tractor that has the backhoe uh, attachment on the rear. And this made digging two of the holes much easier. The, the one hole that we showed you earlier is back in amongst those trees and there was no way to get the tractor in there, so we had to dig that one by hand. Luckily, we didn't hit too many tree roots, but that was one of the things we were worried about is there's plenty of trees still up on top of this, uh, this knob where we have the repeater site. So we got to digging. Now this is the third post and you can see just a little bit of concrete around the top and we've kind of marked out what we're going to dig uh, around that post to install the new ones. All of these guy lines that you see, there's five or six per post are loose. So it, again, they're not really doing their job. So several of us got together. These posts are extremely heavy and uh, long as well. As you'll see as we uh, tilt this one up, I'm 6'2" and this post is taller than me. 
and we want uh, at least about half of it buried in the ground and then uh, over a ton of concrete uh, to hold it down. So we are lowering it into the hole and eventually we're going to make sure that it's level. We also want to make sure that there's some ring attachments up towards the top that you can't see. We want to make sure those are pointing towards the tower. So we're going to have to pull this back out and then readjust. These new posts are great. They also have the spikes on them so that the concrete can adhere uh, to at least one set of the spikes on all four sides uh, just to give us a little bit more of, uh, I guess you would call it, uh, not going to be able to, uh, to come out. So we were uh, adjusting a little bit and we would do this in all three of the holes and then we've got to start adding concrete as well. Alrighty, so we noticed we're not turned exactly the way we need to be, so we pulled it back out and we're gonna have to adjust the hole a little bit so that this can actually fit in the hole in the proper orientation. Alrighty, so we had a, a member come out with his cement mixer. You can see the tote on his uh, trailer there to the right, that, uh, so he can add water. And then he's mixing two bags at a time. Now remember, there's 81 bags. So he's doing this a little over 40 times. We would put the cement in a wheelbarrow and then we would uh, trundle it over to where the posts were. And again, it's a little bit rough in between, but we made it work. And we had a crew of guys not only digging, but also adjusting the cement as well as making sure the posts remain level. And then uh, Josh here just kept mixing bags of concrete and uh, just amazing work. He did this for about three and a half hours straight, uh, mixing two bags and then we would take those bags and pour them into the holes. Now what uh, we have is the repositioning of the tractor. And again, this was an amazingly wonderful uh, resource to have so that we could dig these holes more expeditiously. And again, we were worried there's enough uh, pine trees and other types of trees in and around this knob where the repeater is that uh, we were worried about tree roots. If we were trying to dig some of these by hand, it would have taken a much longer period of time. Having this attachment though on the tractor made pretty short work of digging the holes, not only to the proper depth that we needed, but also uh, about a yard square. In this particular case, I think this hole came out a little bit larger, but we'd rather be larger and deeper than not. Now remember, this is an emergency set of repairs. We probably had 12 to 13 guys up there that day. Uh, normal workday, we'd probably have a fraction of that because there's not a whole lot that the repeaters need. But Monticello, as you folks have seen in the abandoned repeater site series, has needed a lot of work. This is just one more set of project or a project to, uh, to get the repeater site where it needs to be. And having this tractor uh, we're going to use it again at the next work day uh, because we got to cut down trees and then move those trees uh, out of the way. So here we're just getting the tractor adjusted. That seat uh, swivels, which was really cool. And then eventually here, Alan's going to get back up on his tractor and begin digging. Again, we live in rural Kentucky, and it's not uncommon that Farmers and others will have these types of tractors uh, available. Uh, I know Alan has had to dig trenches on his property for water lines and some other things. These come in really handy and the attachments you can get on these tractors are really, really cool. You can get uh, box levelers, you can get uh, tillers. Here we've got a backhoe attachment. Of course, you can get the bucket on the front where if you want to move gravel or dirt or whatever it is that you want to move. So it was amazingly good fortune that we had a member with one of these tractors to make digging the holes much easier. Now, <laughs> our professional tower climber installer, uh, Ken, is carrying one of, these, uh, one of those posts by himself. If you get it balanced just right, it's not too bad, but uh, over 100 pounds. And here we can see the backhoe going into that soft earth, but also breaking up the roots uh, in this particular hole. This hole had, I think, the most roots of all three of the holes that we were digging. And uh, this, again, the backhoe attachment made it short work, which was really, really nice. Now, if you look just behind where Steve is standing, you see the original post, it's just an I-beam. There's nothing wrong with the uh, construction of the I-beam or using it for this type of thing, but it just didn't have a lot of concrete around it. Plus, each of the I-beams 
had a cable attached to the rear side of it uh, to keep it uh, straight up and down and keep it level, which kind of gave us pause just in that uh, because there wasn't enough concrete on the post to keep them uh, from moving in the first place. Here, we're making sure we have a yard of concrete uh, all around these posts uh, to ensure that we don't even need an anchor cable on the back side of the post. And we also put these posts just in front of the old posts so we can reuse the guy lines. Of course, they'll have to be retensioned and all the rest of it. But that comes for another day. Talking to Josh here as he mixes more concrete, but you can see we're already off one pallet and on the last one. So we're starting to fill up the last hole. So here's the post as it currently sits. This was the first one. We dug this hole by hand. This was also, you can see the I-beam behind it that had a hole through it. So incredibly in poor condition. Uh, we have the yellow on top for better visibility. We're gonna go back and paint the lower portion uh, so that it's all yellow above ground. Here we actually move the dirt around this post. This is on the south side of the tower and uh, just the yellow point picking up or pointing up from the ground. And again, the old post behind it. You can also see the anchor holes there on the left-hand side of the yellow. And then this was the third location. And again, we'll go and paint the, the bottom portion there yellow again. And this pretty much finalizes getting those posts in the ground. With the right number of people, with the right equipment, this job was knocked out in about four and a half, five hours. That's a lot of time, but it needed to be done. So we are extremely happy. We've got new anchor posts in the ground. We've got to get the guy line switched over. We hope you like this video and it goes to show some of the other kinds of maintenance that might be required at your repeater sites with towers. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, please like this video, let us know what you think, and thanks for watching. 73.